Okay, so uh, 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 so in the last couple of lectures, we uh, focused on higher spin theories, uh, and in particular, uh, uh, described to you in ADS three how uh, you can have uh, fairly simple theories uh, uh, involving gauge fields of spin higher than two. In particular, you can have theories going all the way up to some maximal spin n. Uh, uh, spins from 2 up to n, and these are uh, described by uh, John Simon's theory uh, based on SLN R times SLN R uh, uh, gauge group. And uh, uh, the, the somewhat uh, uh, novel thing uh, uh, compared to theories of gravity on ADS3 in general was that uh, uh, instead of just the Virasoro algebra being the asymptotic symmetry algebra, you also had an enlargement of uh, the, that algebra. Uh, in particular, you had uh, these spin 3, spin 4, and higher spin holomorphic and anti-holomorphic curves, uh, all the way again uh, in an SLN R theory, or, or you had currents all the way up to spin n. Uh, uh, so these are currents on the boundary, and they have a, a uh, a current algebra, an algebra of OPEs uh, of these currents, which, I was, which is uh, a familiar algebra from the study of conformal field theories, uh, which is called the WN algebra. Uh, but I assume that most of you have not seen what WN algebras are, or indeed uh, how, uh, uh, how uh, you can construct uh, these higher spin currents. So today we will uh, start by discussing uh, two-dimensional conformal field theories, uh, higher spin conserved currents, uh, and these will be the class of theories uh, which uh, um, might be dual to, which might, uh, which might give a dual description of, of uh, the higher spin theories uh, on ADS-3 that we studied. Uh, um, so uh, the higher, so remember, in this case, we are in the CFT, we are talking of higher spin conserved currents, whereas in the gauge bulk in the ADS3, we were talking about higher spin gauge fields. And uh, uh, the the, the uh, ADS CFT dictionary, as usual, uh, uh, tells you that uh, these uh, higher spin gauge fields are sources for these currents, and that's how we uh, uh, saw it work. In the, uh, in, in the particular case of W3 or the spin 3, etc. So, um, uh, so we we'll talk about, uh, so we saw that there are, uh, uh, so the uh, higher spin theories, higher spin gauge theories on, on ADS3. I had a uh, symmetry algebra. Generated by this W S. Holomorphic and plus the anti-holomorphic. Uh, so generated by these uh, currents. Uh, uh, of spin S. And in particular, so uh, so uh, this is itself uh, somewhat surprising uh, because uh, uh, so in ordinary quantum field theories, in usual quantum field theories, uh, in uh, a dimension greater than two, uh, the Coleman-Mandula theorem tells us. Uh, implies there are no conserved charges uh, of uh, of spin greater than one or currents of spin greater than two conserved currents of spin greater than two uh, 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 so that's uh, 
uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, feature of uh, quantum field theories, uh, which is to do with the fact that if you had these higher spin conserved charges uh, or currents, uh, um, uh, you would, the scattering uh, of, uh, so, uh, uh, okay, I should say in interacting uh, In d greater than 2, there are no conserved charges because uh, if you had an interacting theory with these higher spin charges, you can, uh, it's at least uh, not difficult to argue that uh, the scattering would be trivial. Uh, uh, so, in other words, they would be essentially free theories. So, uh, so the presence of uh, uh, these higher spin conserved currents uh, um, strongly constrains. Uh, uh, scattering amplitudes in your theory, and therefore, uh, mm, uh, uh, usually you don't have any uh, such objects. So, of course, uh, we are talking here about currents in a two-dimensional theory. So, uh, indeed, in two dimensions, um, the, you can violate the coleman mandula theorem, or rather, there is no theorem for the two-dimensional case. Uh, um, and uh, there are many quantum field theories, so-called integrable quantum field theories, which have conserved currents of spin uh, uh, greater than two. Uh, uh, and uh, recently, there's, there was a, this was strictly speaking, uh, this was for interacting quantum field theories. The, the original coleman mandula theorem was for a theory with a mass gap, so that you can, uh, 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 you can define amplitudes, uh, but recently Maldacena and Jibodev uh, uh, have sort of argued for an analog in CFTs uh, with uh, d uh, with d greater than 2. Uh, uh, so in conformal field theories where you don't really have scattering amplitudes, but nevertheless, what they showed is that uh, at least a subset of the correlators, namely those of the highest spin currents, uh, are those of a, a, a free theory. Um, uh, well, they strictly did it for d equal to 3. People have sort of uh, gotten results along similar lines for higher dimensions. Uh, so, uh, so in higher dimensions, uh, you can't hope to have uh, CFTs or quantum field theories, non-trivial, non-interacting, uh, uh, interacting quantum field theories or CFTs, which have conserved higher spin currents. But as we will see, uh, we'll explicitly see today in two-dimensional conformal field theories, we can construct uh, uh, um, these uh, uh, conserved currents, uh, uh, and uh, so that. Uh, uh, and will, you'll get an idea of how to obtain the, their OPE from this construction, etc. So, uh, these are general remarks. So, let me... So, um, in the case uh, that Spenta discussed, which was yes. plus 1D, yes. so higher spin currents were not exactly conserved, but they were sort of weakly They were weakly, uh, weakly conserved, yeah. I mean, weakly violated. Uh, the conservation law had... Uh, 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 yeah. <coughs> yeah, they are exactly conserved because they are holomorphic currents. Uh, so, del Z bar, this is zero. So, they are exactly conserved. So, but is that weakly, weakly violated one can show that this is free in the three dimensions? No, there are interacting theories which, uh, uh, like this, Chan Simons coupled with the vector fields that. Uh, few people have been studying, uh, uh, which for which uh, uh, these are weakly violated and they are not free. Uh, and they are not. Uh, they are genuine. Sorry. Uh, trivial in what sense? Uh, yeah, but uh, the, the, you you might be. They are computable theories. I mean, uh, there are exact sol uh, solutions known, and you you people. I mean, uh, Sandeep and others and uh, uh, sh uh, various people in this audience have uh, looked at uh, the uh, free energy, for instance, and uh, many things, correlation functions. But that does not mean they are free. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, there are many solvable uh, um, theories, but it doesn't mean that they are free. Uh, free means basically that the correlation functions are exactly the same as that of a free boson or free fermion or whatever other free field that you have in that dimension. Uh, so, okay, so let, uh, let's consider, uh, let's do this sort of step by step. So, constructing higher spin conserved currents. So, we'll start also with free theories, because they are the simplest ones in which you can uh, 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 construct them. So, it's, uh, so in D equal to 2, uh, two space-time dimensions. Uh, so, the simplest example is a free boson, or bosons. You can take some uh, uh, n number of them. So, here it's actually fairly simple to define the conserved currents, uh, the higher spin conserved currents. So, for a boson, uh, it, 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 they are essentially proportional to up to whatever choice of normalization. Uh, sorry, a. Equals zero to s minus two. Basically, they they are proportional to. Let me write the combinatorial factors. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I've taken a complex boson for simplicity, or n complex bosons. It's. Uh, uh, so, you can take i equal to 1 to some n, if you wish. So, uh, forget about these uh, combinatorial factor, uh, uh, coefficients for the moment. Basically, they are proportional to various derivatives uh, acting on phi dagger and phi. Uh, 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 you basically have the spin s term uh, has s plus, uh, is that correct? This is s scheme minus 1. So, it has uh, S uh, derivatives, uh, and uh, 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 and these S derivatives, uh, 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 these terms are all conserved. Basically, del bar of this is equal to zero, uh, uh, which is why I wrote this as a function uh, of uh, z and z bar, uh, only because of the equations of motion, uh, which tell you that del bar uh, acting on this is equal to zero. There is always one derivative, uh, at least, so on each of the phi's. So, in any case, so all the terms here are conserved by the equations of motion. So, since del bar del phi i is equal to zero, so uh, so at first sight you might think that you don't need anyway these factors because uh, just these combinations themselves give you conserved currents. These factors are present. So that this object under a global SU, global conformal uh, transformation, namely an SL2C transformation, transform as a primary of weight uh, uh, S. Uh, so these are essential so that you get the right transformation properties. So this combinatorics is, is necessary for this to... Uh, is for this to transform uh, as a weight S primary of the global of the SL2C transformations, namely under Z goes to AZ plus B over CZ plus D. Uh, uh, so, uh, so that's what fixes this. It's uh, just a bit of an exercise. You can uh, construct 
the S equal, uh, the S equal uh, piece is just the stress tensor. Uh, that's the usual stress tensor construction. Uh, uh, the S equal to 3, you can uh, uh, try to write down an arbitrary combination of the three different terms over here and demand that it, uh, uh, demand that it transform uh, as a primary and you will see that uh, the coefficients get fixed. It's not, it's a primary under this global part. So, uh, yeah, it's a quasi-primary under the full Virasoro symmetry, but under the SL2C, it just transforms uh, in a uh, homogeneous way. So, uh, yeah, the additional term, the Schwarzian derivative term, vanishes for the, SL, uh, for the SL2C uh, piece. So, uh, uh, once you have this free field, well, strictly speaking, you should consider this thing normal ordered, uh, and then you can consider uh, the OPE uh, of two of these, and uh, 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 so well, I won't write out. Let me, yeah, uh, let me not write all the. I'll just write it very schematically uh, uh, because it's just a free field computation uh, to compute their OPE. You just do weak contractions. And what you see is that the leading term is one where you have one weak contraction and that will give you a term which is, uh, it's easy to see that you'll have S plus S prime minus two terms. Uh, it'll be uh, some, so it, you'll get uh, a field like this, and then s plus s prime minus 4 uh, uh, plus so on, and up to some uh, constant piece, central piece. Uh, uh, well, the central piece will be if s is equal to s prime. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, so there's a simple OPE. It's a linear OPE in this particular case. Uh, uh, it's just a free field OPE. And, uh, but this algebra of this OPE, by the way, there are coefficients here which will depend on the spins and so on. So I'm not writing this out known in the literature, just a few cumbersome expressions in terms of uh, hypergeometric functions. Uh, 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 so uh, it's not very, nothing very illuminating about that. Uh, and this algebra is called This algebra uh, uh, has a name. It's called the uh, W infinity algebra. Uh, uh, there's a family of algebras called the W infinity algebras, which I will mention uh, more about. But this is uh, the, that algebra at uh, when the parameter uh, lambda, so there's a one parameter family of algebras. When this parameter is equal to one, that's what this algebra is, uh, uh, has a name. So, uh, okay, so uh, uh, so that's free bosons. You can do something very similar. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Uh, this Q is a subscript which actually says quantum. There are, there's a classical version whose structure constants are a limit of the quantum. Uh, so here I mean the full quantum algebra. Yeah, this Q is not a parameter. It's just to uh, uh, refer to the fact that it's the quantum algebra. Uh, there's a one parameter. I, right now, this is just a name. And I, I, there's a one parameter family of algebras involving higher spin currents. So there are not, as I will write for you right now, there's another example, namely that of free fermions, which will also have spin S conserved currents, but they will obey a different algebra. So just because you have spin S currents and you have an infinite number of them with spin S equal to 2, 3, doesn't mean they all obey the same algebra. There are inequivalent algebras. And there's a one-parameter family of inequivalent algebras. And that parameter is, uh, takes the value 1 for this free boson case. and uh, uh, and uh, if we look at the free fermion case, uh, um, 
And so in fermion case, you can do a similar thing for, uh, uh, say, direct fermions. You can construct W again. So that's why I'm labeling it by different subscript B for boson and F for fermions. Uh, you can construct from uh, some number of direct fermions. You can again construct a set of conserved currents taking a somewhat similar but slightly different form. So, uh, so it's, uh, so yeah, so uh, you see this one had uh, S uh, derivatives, this has S minus 1 derivatives, uh, and, uh, but the S equal to 2 term is the stress tensor which has psi bar del slash psi, uh, del psi type of term. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, so once again, by the equations of motion, these are con all conserved. The combinatorics is chosen once again for it to transform properly. Uh, and uh, you have an OPE which is linear but has different coefficients because now you are uh, using the weak contractions of the fermions, so you'll get slightly different coefficients. So again, uh, linear OPE. So by the way, I, I, I should have mentioned it, but S goes from 2 to infinity. Uh, both cases. So here you get conserved currents of all spins. Uh, uh, and, uh, and they have a linear OPE. Uh, in a way, you see from the OPE, you're forced to uh, do that because uh, you start with, say, uh, 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 some spin 3 currents. The uh, two spin 3 currents will generate for you a spin 4 current, etc. So, uh, so you, 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 to close the OPE, you need an infinite number of uh, uh, such uh, terms. So there's a linear OPE, uh, and uh, uh, that defines an algebra, uh, which is, again, in this family, uh, the value lambda equal to 0. Uh, and so the, this is another element. So these algebras are all, uh, yeah, so actually maybe there's a hidden parameter which I've been suppressing, an implicit parameter which is the central charge, which is part of the algebra, just like the Verasoro algebra. So there is, if you wish, two parameters, the central charge and the parameter lambda. Uh, 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 so, uh, so you have, uh, 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 so all these algebras uh, uh, have, uh, 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 so this algebra is inequivalent uh, to to that one, and uh, 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 so uh, and so that's these are the two simplest examples of uh, 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 of um, uh, of higher spin conserved currents. But you see, in these examples, you are forced to have the whole lot of them. Namely, you need to have spins two all the way up to infinity. The OPE automatically tells you, as I said, uh, that you, you can't close it on any finite set, and uh, you get them all together. Whereas in the uh, Vasiliev theories that we studied yesterday, uh, for instance, in the SL3 theory, there was only the spin 3 and the spin 2 current, no higher spin currents, and they formed a closed algebra amongst themselves. So how do you construct theories which have this finite number of higher spin conserved currents? And to do that uh, uh, will bring us to the second question, which is also uh, that uh, of how to uh, bypass the coleman mandula theorem in interacting CFTs. The two examples I gave you are uh, non-interacting. They are free CFTs. Indeed, the analogs of these exist in any dimension. Uh, you can write a similar expression in uh, higher dimensions, except there will be some indices, uh, del mu's, and so on, and combinatorial factors will be different, but uh, basically from symmetric traceless combinations of derivatives uh, acting on bilinears of phi or psi, it, you can construct uh, higher spin conserved currents, and those are the only ones allowed by the Coleman-Mandula theorem in d greater than 2. 
But now we'll talk about a class of theories which have, uh, uh, which have uh, finite, which are interacting theories and which have a finite number of uh, higher spin currents. Okay, and this uh, uh, arises in the class of conformal field theories called Cosset conformal field theories. There are theories, we'll see. Uh, they are, the free theories are uh, basically these two. Uh, but all the in-between values correspond to interacting theories. Yeah. You could actually have the S equal to one current as well. Uh, you want to, if you truncate, then you get a slightly enlarged algebra, the W1 plus infinity algebra. If you sort of project out that, um, if you look at states with only this, it's related to this W infinity algebra. Uh, uh, so uh, you, could indeed, you could write down the S equal to 1 charge current as well, uh, uh, U1 current as well. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, OK, so these uh, Cosset conformal field theories are probably a little bit unfamiliar uh, to people. But maybe you have seen the following archetypal two-dimensional uh, interacting conformal field theory, which is called the wesumino witten conformal field theory. Uh, so what is the wesumino witten conformal field theory? It's based on a group G. And it is basically a theory of built from currents uh, be, uh, that you construct from a group-valued field. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so the uh, action of the Wilmino theory with gauge group G is essentially something like uh, K times uh, some normalization and then you get some G inverse del G with a trace uh, over the this thing, and this is a sort of a, a term like uh, two currents, uh, uh, bilinear of currents, but actually not a conformal field theory by itself. To get a conformal field theory, you need uh, to add a, an extra term, the so-called wesumino witten term, which cannot be written as a local functional of, of G's uh, in the two-dimensional so if you are on some two-dimensional, uh, uh, you can't write the additional term as a functional uh, 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 local two-dimensional space, but uh, instead you write it on a three-dimensional space such that the boundary of uh, that space is your two-dimensional space that you are integrating over. Uh, uh, and uh, this is the famous Vesumino written functional, which is, again, G inverse del G, the whole cubed, uh, just to write it in short form notation. Uh, um, uh, so because this is essentially the wedge product of uh, uh, the G inverse del G. So this is, uh, 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 this is a, a, a famous example of an interacting uh, uh, conformal field theory. Uh, uh, which is, in fact, exactly solvable. Uh, but this is not quite the theory that we want. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, th this theory by itself does not have a higher... This has what is called a cuts moody algebra. It has an extended algebra, but based on... Uh, uh, so it has a cuts moody algebra based on the group G, uh, uh, but uh, it does not have higher spin uh, uh, conserved currents. Uh, what, ha what does have uh, higher sp I mean, the, uh, the theories which do have the higher spin conserved currents are ones in which you gauge a group of this uh, vesumino witten theory. Uh, uh, so basically, it's what is called a gauged 
Whereas, you know, within theory, uh, um, maybe I will just write it over here, uh, this S of G mod H. So the Cosette theory is one in which uh, you, uh, you take a subgroup H uh, of G and you gauge it in a specific way. Uh, uh, so basically you add current, you add a gauge field uh, taking values in the subgroup H uh, and uh, you, write, you write down some gauge terms uh, involving in the coupling of the uh, uh, pieces of this currents which take values in so well this is something like a bar so you have a anti-holomorphic components uh, I maybe I'll just write it very briefly without explaining it very much um, um, why this particular choice of gauge, uh, I mean, uh, uh, gauging takes this particular form that can be understood. But, uh, let me, um, because I, I won't quite use this form anyway. Uh, um, uh, but uh, so there's a sort of a gauging in which you have uh, the pieces coupling to the currents and then some quadratic pieces. It's sort of like when you couple a scalar field, it's some nonlinear version of the coupling of a scalar field to a gauge field. Uh, uh, you have a linear piece in A, which couples to the currents, and then you have a quadratic piece in A. Uh, uh, so it's essentially uh, 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 like that. And, uh, sorry? Yeah, A, A bar. Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, well, let me not, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, this is, uh, A bar is the Z bar component, A is the Z component, uh, and uh, the, the precise form is not very important. Uh, I just, if, so if you want to just, uh, uh, so let me not write it in, it's actually not uh, a form, really, so. Uh, uh, this is del Z bar. So it's basically uh, this. Just to give you an idea that it, there's a concrete Lagrangian behind these theories, though the Lagrangian form of it is not what we will use uh, 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 for uh, studying it. Uh, but the one thing uh, that we will uh, uh, just uh, take from there is that uh, essentially the equations of motion, the A equations of motion, set the H currents, the piece of the currents which belong to the subgroup H to, to zero. Uh, and so that means the, this is G inverse DG, the piece, uh, so this is an element of the Lie algebra, you take the piece which is in the H uh, part of it. Uh, uh, and then you get the G equations of motion tell you that the connection is flat. Note that I've not added a kinetic term for the field. I've only gauged the currents, but I've not added a kinetic term for the gauge field. In, indeed, in two dimensions, if I add a kinetic term for the gauge field, that will uh, break conformal invariance. But this process does not break conformal invariance. Uh, in any case, uh, uh, the uh, 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 the way in which, let me, um, uh, uh, let me just describe to you uh, 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 how the conserved are constructed in this theory, the higher spin conserved currents, uh, uh, starting with the uh, vesumino witten theory, the currents of the vesumino witten theory. Uh, uh, but um, actually for that purpose, what I will need, uh, and I'll, I'll continue the currents in a very specific example for you, which is the simplest uh, uh, in some sense. So you take sorry, and g slash h in the beginning. G slash h is not a group. 
So, so you can't start, I mean, what do you mean start from that? Uh, so in general, G mod H is not a group. Uh, 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 yeah, so, uh, 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 so we'll consider the specific case where G is essentially the product of two SUN uh, 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 gauge groups, but one which we'll take at this level K. So this level K is, in fact, uh, it's very, the, these Vesuminovitan theories are closely related to John Simon's theories. Uh, uh, so the same object that appears here, they're both called the level uh, outside the action. And they will take the second uh, one to be at level one. So what that means is that you start with a Vesuminovitan theory, uh, with, uh, which is the sum of uh, two Vesuminovitan theories based on uh, one based on SUN at level K and the other based on SUN at level one. Uh, but then you gauge uh, SUN, which is the diagonal subgroup of this SUN uh, times SUN, and uh, then its level is uh, sort of forced to be k plus 1 if you think of the uh, occurrence of the uh, uh, SUN plus the SUN diagonal, uh, uh, the currents. So in other words, there are, okay, so, so you can define currents of this uh, like I did over here. So that I'll call these currents JA, A goes from 1 to have n square minus 1, uh, and uh, 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 here I'll call this j a 2 uh, So there are two sets of currents, and this one, the diagonal one, is one in which uh, you take j a 1 plus j a 2 So that's, so these are the currents of the diagonal uh, theory, uh, and that's the one that you're setting to zero, in a sense, by the equation of motion. Uh, uh, so, uh, okay, so in this example, it will turn out to be, well, at least I'll be able to convince you, I hope, uh, uh, how uh, that the construction of uh, higher conserved currents is, uh, is, is feasible, even if it's a bit uh, technically uh, complicated, but at least you should be able to see that uh, uh, you can construct these higher spin conserve currents in these theories for n greater than 2. For n greater than 2, these theories, well, in general, uh, these theories, uh, well, I can say uh, the statement I'm going to make doesn't require for these theories, uh, you, uh, there are conserved currents. Ws of z, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the currents, uh, like I wrote down over here, they, they, they uh, so the, uh, uh, the, uh, so you can uh, define uh, conserved currents, S all the way from to N, uh, so in particular for N greater than 2, you see that there would be currents, uh, 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 there would be currents uh, of uh, spin greater than 2. S equal to 2 is just the uh, usual uh, case where you have a Virasoro uh, current, uh, but uh, um, uh, the others are uh, higher spin currents. In fact, th there is exactly, I'll just argue that there is exactly one conserved current Ws for each spin s from 2 to n. So in these theories, the other theories, there are higher spin conserved currents, but typically their multiplicity grow. But these are the simplest in that you have exactly one conserved current, but you don't have an infinite number of them. Uh, uh, in general, you have one at each spin up to a maximal spin n, where n is the same n that appears over there. Okay, so this is what I will now try to uh, uh, to, uh, to demonstrate. 
give a in principle uh, construction of them which uh, at least I'll do it for the cubic case and you'll see that it should it, the logic generalizes uh, uh, Wine bubble witnesser. This yes. theorem also prohibits the uh, highest, highest spin conserved current. And the no, it prohibits of, the uh, emergence of highest spin gauge fields. So you can, uh, it tells you that you cannot have uh, a composite spin to a field uh, which behaves like a graviton uh, 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 coming out of a local quantum field theory. Uh, uh, in the same dimension, so okay. So if you have ADS CFT is a violation of weinberg witten theorem in that you have a graviton, but it's in a one higher dimension. But uh, uh, but in that you don't have it as a bound state, and uh, you can't have a bound state as a graviton in in that theory. Which theorem? So there you have it directly in the spectrum. You, you're starting with this. Uh, of course, no one tells you that you cannot start with gravity. Of course, you can start with Einstein action, and there will be a spin two field in the spectrum because you're started with a spin two field. The claim is that if you start with any other local quantum field theory which does not have a, a spin two field in its uh, fundamental uh, uh, among its fundamental fields, uh, uh, then you cannot have as a bound state. You might imagine some very strongly interacting theory that somehow produces a bound particle which is massless and has spin 2. There are, after all, massive spin 2 particles that can be produced as bound states in QCD or any theory. But they can never be massless. Because if they are massless, then they will have to have the same couplings as a graviton. And, uh, and uh, and then there will be gauge fields, and that uh, uh, is what weinberg witten theorem uh, 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 prohibits. Okay, so so uh, so how do we construct uh, such conserved currents? Um, uh, uh, so the main thing to note is that in SUN, in the group SUN, there are uh, invariant tensors or invariant tensors or Casimirs of rank 2 all the way to n invariant symmetric tensors. So, in uh, this is a fact about group that uh, just like you have uh, uh, the quadratic Casimir, which is present in, of course, in SU2 and every SUN, uh, uh, SUN uh, also has uh, higher, by n greater than 2, there are higher order Casimirs, cubic Casimir, quartic Casimir, and so on. Probably the thing that is most familiar to you and what I will use uh, is DABC, uh, which forms a symmetric so DABC is, uh, there's the FABC, which is the anti-symmetric uh, tensor, but there's also a DABC, which is, uh, which is like trace of, say, lambda A, lambda B, lambda C, where these are the generators. Uh, this is a symmetric uh, uh, tensor that appears in anomalies, for example. Uh, so this is, you might have seen before. So there are all these, uh, uh, there are cubic and higher order Casimirs for SUN, uh, uh, similarly, you can write out up to rank n Casimirs in S, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and from these, let's construct combination which is something like so. Let's say. So I'm going to construct a candidate spin 3 current in the following way. Uh, I'm going to take this DABC, okay, uh, 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 this DABC, and 
this, uh, so I'm working in this theory where I have these uh, Vesemino-Witten currents, so I take the most general cubic combination of these currents with some arbitrary coefficients. So I'm just writing out all the possible terms that you can have from the, the cubic terms that you can write down involving these uh, 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 cubic terms involving these currents. Uh, uh, so we have two currents, and so we can write down four terms, essentially, from the cubic terms involving different numbers of the one and two currents. Uh, so there are four possible terms you can write down. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so consider a general combination like this. Uh, and now the, uh, um, uh, the spin three conserved current. So notice, uh, remember that in this Cosset theory, you basically are setting the, these uh, diagonal combinations to, uh, uh, to zero. So, uh, uh, so you must, uh, so what, in general, this will be some kind of uh, uh, a cubic uh, term. Um, uh, but um, uh, we, 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 if we uh, demand that it commutes, With the uh, uh, with J A one plus J A two with this diagonal currents that generate the H uh, uh, the H currents, uh, uh, then we get a, a combination. Uh, then we essentially uh, get a unique set of values for the AIs. So this is maybe too low, but uh, so, I, I'm, uh, so I claim that if I demand that this commutes with this diagonal currents, so why commute? Because in the, in the quotient theory, uh, you want the, uh, this currents to be essentially set equal to zero. One way to consistently do that, uh, to be able to consistently do that, uh, these operators of this H theory, like these currents, must have non-singular OPE with uh, with the uh, with the uh, with objects in your uh, quotient. So, if you want to construct uh, an object like this, which belongs to the quotient theory, then it uh, it must commute with uh, these current uh, of the H. And uh, so that uh, uh, you can consistently set it equal to zero. Yeah. Um, so J's are currents, which is to say spin one objects in either the first S U N K yeah. or S U N yeah. one, depending on the label one or two. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. So you. that's uh, the, the thing. These are in the S U N level K, and these are in the S U N level one. Uh, so uh, now you know the OPE, OPE of two currents in an uh, so essentially you get something like this. But, uh, so in general, if you have some Z and W, you get something like this. That, that I might be missing some factors, uh, but. So, uh, so the, this is the OPE between the currents. This is what defines the current algebra, and this K is the level of the uh, 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 of the corresponding uh, uh, currents. Uh, so this is the, let's say, if you wish, definition of the Cotes-Moody algebra. So now use this. So this J1 plus J8, uh, J1. 
and uh, and uh, take its OPE with this cubic combination using this uh, basic uh, 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 underlying OPE, remembering that one and two commute. Uh, uh, the currents of one commute with the currents of two. Uh, uh, so if you do that, uh, you see there are, uh, for it to commute, what you want to say, or to have a basically a non-singular OPE, you want it, want these two singular terms to cancel out. Uh, uh, that gives you a certain set of uh, conditions on, on your, uh, on these A1, A2, A3, and A4. So let's see what kind of conditions you get. Firstly, this term, the singular term over here, uh, that is essentially telling you a simple, this has a simple interpretation. This is essentially the reflection of the commutation relations of the group. It's telling you that uh, JA commutator JB, uh, if you write it in terms of modes, it is essentially the commutation relations of the group. Uh, and it is telling you that if you wish that JB transforms in the adjoint representation of JA. So uh, when I take JA1 plus JA2 and commute it with this, because this is a cubic invariant, uh, because this is an invariant, it's a Casimir, uh, this will, by construction, will not appear. Because it will, uh, it's just telling you that it's just rotating uh, by the adjoint action in the group. So this term will not appear. The thing you have to make sure is this, the non-trivial piece is to ensure that this singular piece doesn't contribute. Uh, and uh, so let's see what uh, you'll get from a term like that. So the, uh, the singular piece uh, proportional to 1 over z minus w square uh, will take the form uh, uh, so in this OPE the singular piece will take the form uh, it will so when I take let's say or let me call this D just uh, because I have ABC over here let me choose a different label uh, so when I have this and it hits any of these currents, I'll get a delta function. So it will set it equal to, uh, uh, it will set uh, the particular one label that it acts on, it will set it equal to uh, uh, that uh, uh, A or D or whatever is the free label. And you'll get something which involves bilinears of currents because the two pieces of the current go away and this is just a number, the level. So the general term, will be of the form some B1, sorry, some D, D, B, C times B1, J, B1, J, C2 plus B2, uh, let me, B2, J, B1, J, C2 plus B3, JB2, JC2. So even without doing any calculation, you can see that the general form it must take will involve bilinears. And basically, one the free index has been set equal to the index that I have over here because of this delta function. And I will have the ABC is always there. I'll have bilinears of the currents. And the bilinears, the most general bilinear of the currents is of this. So even without doing any calculation, one can see that it must take. Uh, and uh, of course, these coefficients b1, b2, b3 will depend on a, a2, a3, a4, some linear combination of these levels, k1, etc. Uh, so yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, so that, uh, 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 so, but now uh, we can see that uh, we have essentially, if we demand, so we have to demand, so for it, and this will be proportional to z minus w, the whole square. So if we have to set this equal to zero, we have to demand independently b1, b2, b3, all three to be equal to zero. 
So to set it equal to 0, we need b1, b2, b3 to be equal to 0. Uh, that gives three conditions on the four A's. You see, there are four A's that we started off with. And I just argued for you that the B's some linear combination of the A's with coefficients which depend on N, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to, uh, so setting B1, B2 equal to uh, all these three equal to 0 gives three conditions on the four AIs. So, therefore, there is one combination, which is uh, uh, one combination of the AIs uh, uh, will be left over, uh, so that I can choose one, uh, which is just an overall scale piece. So, uh, because this is homogeneous in all the A's and the B's, so I have basically three conditions on the four variables. I have essentially, up to an overall factor, I have a unique combination of these currents, which will commute with the J1 plus J2. So, this is what is called the Casimir construction of the three current. And it's an explicit construction. I have given you the algorithm to explicitly find out its coefficients. It's a little bit of tedious algebra, but uh, it's, uh, it's possible with, uh, to do it. And there are even computer programs in general, which tell you how to general. Uh, well, let me, uh, so this tells you. Uh, uh, so, a unique uh, up to overall factor. Unique uh, uh, combination of the by of the cubic terms. Uh, so, so you get uh, you get a cubic combination, which is a coset, which is uh, holomorphic, and uh, and therefore uh, uh, and therefore is uh, uh, um, is uh, uh, conserved. Um, so, this construction generalizes to higher current, uh, so we found exactly one conserved current of spin 3 uh, in this uh, theory. Uh, you can do a similar thing for spin 4, at least for n greater than 4, you will have a quartic Casimir. You write down a similar general combination of the uh, a quartic combination of currents. You can see that there will be 4 plus 1, 5 uh, such terms, and uh, the same argument will give you uh, four conditions, uh, uh, so you'll get again four conditions on five um, uh, uh, coefficients, which will again pick out a unique uh, uh, conserved current, uh, and so on uh, up to spin n, which is the maximal Casimir that you can have. Uh, uh, so, so with this, uh, so this is how you construct these currents, and so once I know these currents with these coefficients. AI, I can take their OPE between the currents, and uh, now it becomes a little bit complicated because the OPE in general, um, so from this Casimir construction of the uh, of these spin S currents in the G mod H theory. we can uh, uh, derive their OPE. So once again, their OPE is fixed by the basic OPE of the uh, uh, And uh, this OPE, uh, so in the case of SU3, for instance, where you have only uh, uh, spin 2 and spin 3, you can work out the OPE of this three current three with uh, the stress tensor 
And you'll see, of course, that it's a weight three object, which is sort of obvious. But, uh, 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 but uh, more non-trivially, you will see the OPE of W with itself. Uh, uh, one, one will find that uh, it's not obvious from what I have uh, written here, because it might seem that in the OPE of W with itself, I will generate terms which will involve uh, higher uh, combinations of currents but it actually turns out that it truncates. The algebra truncates because of the coefficients. The coefficients are such that the algebra truncates and the only nonlinear terms, you do, you get nonlinear terms which are products of uh, lower order terms, like product of two Virasoro, uh, uh, for instance. So you get, uh, you can derive their OPE. It is a nonlinear OPE. Which closes on, uh, uh, which closes amongst all these currents. So, uh, so that part uh, I, I can't. Show, but uh, 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 so, but at least you can see that the currents can be explicitly constructed, uh, and uh, these are in general interacting theories. Because I should have. Uh, uh, said it uh, maybe right here itself when I talked about these G mod H theories. So, uh, so in fact, this construction I could apply even for the, uh, uh, for the stress tensor, for, this, uh, for just the quadratic Casimir. And in fact, that's how I would get the stress tensor of the uh, uh, G mod H theory. You would see in that case, it is just the difference between the stress tensors of the Vesuminovitan theory based on gauge group G and the, uh, that based on H. Uh, recall that in a Vesuminovitan theory, the stress tensor is a quadratic combination of the currents. Uh, it's a, uh, so this one will involve a quadratic combination of J1, J2s. This will involve the diagonal currents. Uh, uh, so it's this difference which will be the stress tensor of the G mod H theory. So if you wish, Tensor is the simplest in, uh, instance of the Casimir construction, and that gives you this. And knowing this, you can compute its OPE. This gives you a central term, and the other usual pieces. But this C G mod H is actually just the difference between the central charges of the uh, G theory and the H theory. And the central charge of the Vesuminovitan theory based on gauge group G is known. Uh, so so in, let me just write it out for SUN, the, uh, uh, which is what we will only, what we will need. This K into the dimension of the group, uh, uh, the level times the dimension of the group, uh, um, so this is uh, for the theory with level k, uh, um, so sun level k. So it's k times n square minus 1 divided by n plus k. So, uh, uh, so that's the central charge. In general, you see this is not an integer. Uh, and if the central charge is not an integer, it's not some free boson or free fermion theory, because the free fermion has a half integer and a free boson has an integer uh, spin. So if the central charge is uh, not an integer, you can immediately conclude that it's not a free theory. And uh, in particular for this case, uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this particular G mod H, the central charge uh, in this case is just the difference between the central charges of these two minus the central charges of this. Uh, uh, so it is C S U N K plus C S U N one minus C S U N K plus one, and you use this formula, and uh, when you simplify, you find it is it takes the following form. Uh, uh, and uh, so you get a family of theories 
uh, 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 one parameter family of theories uh, for any fixed n, you have a one parameter family of theories labeled by k, uh, uh, and uh, uh, clearly this is, uh, these are interacting theories. In particular, for the n equal to 2 case, they are the simplest CFTs, other than the free CFTs, they are the simplest ones that you can study, the so-called Virasoro minimal models. Uh, and uh, um, much is known about these uh, theories. By, these are what are called the WN minimal models because they have WN symmetry. Uh, the n equal to two cases, what is called the Virasoro minimal model, but uh, in general, these are called the WN minimal models. And uh, they have these higher spin conserved currents, and draw exactly one uh, at every rank. Uh, and uh, uh, for holography, uh, so I will just stop by having set all the stage for all the different ingredients. I, I'll just say, that I'll stop by saying that for holography, what we do is take a large n. Limit. Oh, by the okay, a large n limit of these theories, a la Toft. So, so the thing effectively, you see the in the Bessemer Witten theory, I have wiped out the Lagrangian. Uh, essentially, the level is playing the role of the inverse level is playing the role of the coupling. So, uh, the Toft coupling. Lambda can be defined as n over, uh, there's in fact a small quantum shift, so it's more natural to, uh, uh, to define this, n, 1 over n plus k as the coupling. And uh, you can take a large n and large k limit, uh, uh, keeping uh, this fixed. Uh, and uh, in that limit, the central charge is like n minus 1 into 1 minus lambda square. This piece just becomes lambda square. Uh, and so you get a theory with a large central charge, but growing like n rather than n square. Uh, uh, so it's more like a vector-like theory in, the, in that the number of degrees of freedom are going like n, even though we started with a gauge theory, or a, a, a gauge theory, I mean, it's, it's a gauge uh, theory with age group with rank n, uh, but uh, uh, essentially the number of degrees of freedom in it uh, is more vector-like. Uh, so you take this limit, and uh, uh, the claim is that this is equivalent to a Vasiliev theory of, uh, it's not equivalent to one of the Vasiliev theories that I described to you, unfortunately. It's a uh, somewhat slight generalization of that, which I didn't have time to describe. Maybe if there's time and interest, I can mention about this. It is based on an infinite dimensional generalization of SLN called HS lambda. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, so you write down a similar churn simons theory, but with a much larger gauge group, uh, which is called HS lambda. It's a generalization uh, of uh, SLN. Uh, and. Uh, and it has spins s equal to 2 all the way to infinity. And you see on this side also in the large n limit, you get spins all the way from 2 to infinity. And that's what, uh, 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 so at least the higher spin con uh, gauge fields here are in correspondence with the higher spin conserved currents here. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, about the algebra, since I introduced this terminology, w infinity. Q. Um, uh, so, when I put lambda equal to an integer n, n greater than 2, this is the same as the Wn. Again, of course, there is the central charge as a parameter, but I will not uh, always write that. So, this Wn algebra, the OPE that I wrote down, is that of this W infinity algebra, uh, one parameter family, when the parameter lambda is equal to n, but quite Somewhat unexpectedly, this, uh, this algebra uh, has an equivalence of, uh, so that this W infinity quantum, this is also uh, uh, for lambda equal to n over n plus k, 
also it is from k to w n. So, there are actually two values of lambda for a, uh, for a, a given central charge which truncate to n uh, and uh, at, okay. uh, when the central charge takes this form, if you can write the central, if you write the central charge in this form uh, uh, and define uh, uh, if you wish from this equation, then for that value of the central charge, there is another value of lambda. Uh, which is n over n plus k, which is also equal to w n. So there are, uh, so the the uh, this parameter map. Um, so there are uh, two different values. At least, well, there's a third value which is negative. But if you restrict values of lambda, uh, uh, there are two different values of lambda which correspond to uh, uh, the w n. Uh, and uh, so it turns out that uh, at finite n. Uh, these, uh, uh, th uh, so here on this side on the field theory we are taking a large n limit of these wn's uh, taking n going to infinity so naively you might think that you are going to w infinity of infinity lambda going to infinity uh, uh, which were, but uh, secretly that's the same as w infinity of lambda by this uh, by this sort of uh, duality that you have in the symmetry algebra uh, this equivalence you have in the symmetry algebra. So, it is actually W infinity of lambda, where lambda is this combination. Uh, and indeed, that is the symmetry algebra for uh, the Vasiliev theory, uh, also based on this group lambda. So, I have used the same lambda here, uh, meaning it should be identified with this parameter here. So, anyway, uh, so that is. Uh, 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 there are many things to be said there, which I don't have time now to talk about. Uh, and there are, yeah, so uh, many, are, but at least I, you got a concrete glimpse into some aspects of this Vasiliev theory and the dual CFTs, which will hopefully enable you to penetrate the literature. Uh, and uh, so, thank you very much. Just, uh, I'll give the mic to Anshuman. Uh, but we do have a discussion sec session, so some yeah, of the I, overflow, if, uh, if please do. If people want to uh, yeah, yeah. elaborate, I can elaborate on some things, yeah. Uh, yeah, since we are uh, running short of time, if you have some pressing questions. In the stern Simon's formulation, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have the time to talk about the adding matter. In, in particular, actually, in this case, I do have to add matter. I have to add a complex scalar. Uh, but the matter coupling is quite constrained. The, uh, uh, the mass, for instance, is fixed. I can't add a scalar of arbitrary mass. Uh, in, in, to a theory like this, I need to add a mass, which is uh, lambda square minus 1. Uh, uh, so, and the couplings are all fixed. It's uh, completely unique theory once I specify lambda. Uh, so, the matter couplings are possible, but they are fixed. And in general, in the supersymmetric cases, you can add fermions as well. Uh, so, you said that I cannot take the free free limit for, for this theory, right? I, so free limit means? I mean, I have two theories, free Fermi and free boson. So, that cannot be obtained from this theory? In some, uh, in some slightly, uh, they can be obtained in a somewhat tricky limit because you can, in principle, take lambda going to 0 or 1 uh -huh. uh, here. And I told you earlier that lambda equal to 0 or lambda equal to 1 correspond to the free fermions and the free bosons. But they are slightly tricky limits because there you have to, lambda equal to 0 means you have to take k faster to infinity than n and uh, the, the CFT has certain pathologies uh, uh, there which you have to treat carefully and I don't think it has been completely understood similarly for lambda equal to 0. So, uh, lambda equal to 1. But so, from, uh, from the bulk point of view, uh, do I have a bulk of this free, free theories? In principle, one should because one can consider the lambda goes to zero and one limits of these theories. Uh, 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 so, in the bulk, nothing seems to special seems to happen at lambda equal to zero or one. Uh, uh, not well. Uh, the, yeah, 
that some uh, the, there are a few special uh, few uh, potentially problematic things, but at least uh, uh, nothing obviously seems to go wrong uh, 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 in the bulk. So, uh, but but those two limits I think have to be dealt with specially and have to be dealt with care. Uh, um, it's safest to stay away from there. So lambda here uh, is by definition defined between zero and one. I forgot to mention. But uh, n and k are both positive integers, so lambda by definition is between 0 and 1. 0 and 1 are the two endpoints which correspond to these free theories. So, okay, so uh, since, oh, well, oh, you have to, uh, well, since this is last lecture of Rajesh, now I hand it over to Sandeep. Uh, let's thank Rajesh once more. Uh,